an 87-year-old with a past medical history of chronic kidney disease, dementia, and hypothyroidism was admitted to the hospital with right upper quadrant abdominal pain, subjective fever, and an elevated white blood cell count to 15.5. Initial CT scans reveal gallbladder wall thickening with stone and sludge consistent with cholecystitis. The patient was then evaluated by acute care trauma surgery and given the option for cholecystectomy. The case was discussed with the family and they wished for a less invasive option given the acute on chronic kidney disease and other comorbidities including dementia. In a multidisciplinary approach with advanced interventional endoscopy, it was determined to pursue EUS-guided gallbladder drainage via a transduodenal route. An initial upper endoscopy was performed and the upper GI tract was normal and amendable to possible EUS-guided drainage. Here we see passage of the echo endoscope and evaluation of the gallbladder revealing a large stone as well as some sludge and gallbladder wall thickening. It's very important on these patients to perform a complete hepatobiliary examination as well as possible examination of the pancreas. After this was completed, we found the candidate was appropriate for possible cholecystoduodenostomy and then evaluated the gallbladder further to find the appropriate tract in which to pursue transduodenal puncture. The appropriate tract is identified with no vasculature or structures in the way. A cauterized puncture is performed creating the ostomy and then the inner flange of the lumen opposing stent is opened. After it has been opened, we tent the stent and pull the gallbladder wall against the duodenal wall and then open the inner flange to create the ostomy tract. The ostomy tract and lumens of the two organs are held intact with the lumen opposing stent. After completion of the cholecystoduodenostomy, we go back with endoscopic ultrasound and confirm appropriate placement of the inner disc. Evaluation reveals a decompressed gallbladder with transduodenal stent visualized on endoscopic ultrasound in appropriate place. The procedure is completed and the patient had a post cholecystoduodenostomy x-ray. The patient was evaluated overnight and placed on a clear liquid diet. The white blood cell count immediately resolved within 24 hours. The pain improved to less than 2 out of 10. The diet was advanced to full diet and the patient no longer had fever and was sent home on a regular diet within 24 hours. Subsequent endoscopy was performed seven weeks later. Here on a normal upper endoscopy you can see that there is a transduodenal stent in place within the duodenal bulb. At this point in time, seven weeks post EUS guided cholecystoduodenostomy, it was determined to remove the transduodenal lumen opposing stent. Here you can see the endoscope peering through the transduodenal stent into the gallbladder. Initially, we attempted removal with a snare. However, we found it's easier facilitated to remove the Axios transduodenal lumen opposing stent with simple stent retrieval forceps. Here you're seeing the process being performed, and the stent is simply removed from the cholecystoduodenostomy tract. We now go back down with an upper endoscope and peer through the tract itself. With some gentle pressure, we're able to perform endoscopy through the cholecystoduodenostomy tract, and now you're peering into the gallbladder. We are now performing endoscopy inside the lumen of the gallbladder, and we can see that all of the sludge has been removed from the gallbladder. The gallbladder inner wall and lumen is healthy and intact. There's appropriate appearing mucosa within the gallbladder. The large stone that was there previously had been washed out with initial lavage and there was no remaining stone within the gallbladder. The vasculature and mucosa of the gallbladder looked healthy and intact. The tract itself has maintained and now, very similar to post peg tube placement, there is an intact tract communicating between the gallbladder and the duodenal wall. This recorded appearance of the inside of the gallbladder with a standard upper endoscope reveals our ability to perform transduodenal endoscopy of the gallbladder wall. We can evaluate the inner aspect of the gallbladder and perform additional interventions including lavage and or fragmentation of stone material that remains inside the gallbladder.
After examination of the gallbladder, the patient was sent home. The patient has been followed for a three-month period of time. He continues to tolerate a regular diet with no abdominal complaint. In conclusion, EOS-guided cholecystoduodenostomy offers an exciting new option for minimally invasive gallbladder drainage and intervention.